Hey, it's Amy here on Hummingbird Hill, and if you cannot tell, it is windy out and it is about 100 degrees. Last time we looked, it was 98, and I haven't looked since. So it's hot, which means there's a lot of watering necessary, and I don't have any drip systems in, and I really don't have any sprinklers. So I'm getting started by just setting some hoses on the bale to get them started. I do have the potential for a drip system out here. I just haven't figured out exactly how to set it up or how to make it work for this layout. But what I wanted to come and talk to you about right now is actually the tomatoes in the raised bed end of the garden because it is so getting time. Oh, don't mind me. It is getting absolutely time to start trimming them because I want to single stem them and they're looking a little peaky. They're looking a little dried out after all this sun. So let's go take a look and see what we can see. Hold on. I'll, I'll meet you down there. Okay, here you go. This is my Dr. Witchies. Now this one it's almost big enough. It's starting to grow the wrong way, which is problematic because I want it to reach over to there and it is, as you can see, flopping back this way. Um, so I need to get some strings and start tying these things up so that they are growing the right way. Now that one's doing great, but they are just getting a little bit out of control. And this one is a little distressed. It got a big soaking last night, but it is super hot and super windy today. So I just want to talk to you a little bit about single stemming and working on pruning because right now I have some giant suckers here on these plants and I didn't prune them on purpose because I'm letting them get stronger they were having these are all my tomatoes from the sick bay so I wanted to make sure that I gave them a good start and they've got a great start they're doing well but I need to get rid of some of these suckers so that they can grow now these actually I can just take off here and plop right in the dirt anywhere I did last year and one of my suckers grew to be about eight feet tall um, and I didn't root it specially I just threw it right in the dirt and made sure to water it really well so I could do that if I wanted but I think I have enough tomatoes right now and last year was actually the first year I ever pruned a tomato so I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about that real quick because let me switch around again Okay, so last year when I first saw Charles Dowding, I was watching his channel and he had a visit out in the greenhouse where he talked about pruning the little suckers off the tomatoes. And I wasn't quite sure I got exactly what he meant and I was worried about trying it. So one day I came out here and I had six tomato plants in this one six, three by six bed. And so I needed to make sure to prune because usually my tomatoes, you know, get five, six feet tall, five or six feet wide, and they go insane. And it's really hard to pick. They turn my arms green, they turn my hands black. It's kind of a pain. So I was like, oh, pruning tomatoes? What is this? Never thought of it. But I was scared to do it. So I came out one day and I pruned all the suckers. Well, not all the suckers. I pruned a whole bunch off one plant and I thought it was killing it. It looked half naked. And then just a few days later, I actually found Jessica on Roots and Refuge. That's when I really started to watch her and I found her because I was looking more for more about tomato suckers. And I think I'd seen something before, but I hadn't really fully watched her channel, but she had her video about tomato armpits and I will link it below for you. And the way she explained it really helped me figure out, oh, that's, I am doing the right thing. I'm okay. And I came out here and I pruned all of my tomatoes. So it is time to do that again. And I just want to give you a quick idea of what that looks like so that if you're interested in pruning your tomatoes to contain them or even in single stemming them just to help increase airflow and circulation so they don't get some of the problems that tomatoes can get, then I will um, link you both to Charles and to Miss Jessica at Roots and Refuge. And I will also show you what I'm going to do here with my tomatoes. All right, let me flip you back around and we'll get started. So right here, as you notice, let's come here. Let's see, where can we see? Okay, right here, as you notice, there is, this is the main stem of the plant. Now this is a little droopy stem right here. A lot because this giant piece right here is a sucker. This is actually a whole nother tomato plant growing. And so I'm gonna take very viciously, and I should have brought my pruners out, but I didn't, because mostly I just use my fingernails. Uh, but I need, these are kind of wimpy right now. There we go. So I just pulled that off. And if I put that in the ground, that will actually become another tomato plant. Again, I'm gonna to have to water it seriously and probably pull off those little flowers that are starting right on the top there. You can see those um, to help give it the best chance of rooting. But I'm not gonna do that. So I'm just gonna come in in here. Now see, here's a smaller one, 
right. Let's see where we go, right there. So this is just a little small one right there. And I'm just gonna go do that and pull those off for the rest of those suckers. I wanna get rid of those to give my plants the best chance at growing. And again, this guy's looking a little peaked. And he's thinking about having some extra shoots. I'm also gonna come down here right by the base, as you can see. I wanna get rid of, there's a giant sucker here. So I'm gonna get rid of that one and I could root that one. I might decide to just for fun. Um, sorry, babe, poor little plant, I'm being brutal. Um, but I'm also gonna get rid of this stem down here. Let's see, it'd help if I had a tripod. I'm gonna get, get rid of this stem here to give some more airflow. And I'm also gonna get rid of this stem right here. Let's see, can you see that one? Uh, yeah, right here, because it is way too close to ground. So those leaves are touching the ground. Um, and I can just be a little brutal with it. Probably should go to the other side for this one, but I'm gonna try from here. There we go. So as you can see, this plant that was nice and big and bushy is looking a little sad. There is another sucker over here I'm gonna get rid of. So I'm gonna get rid of that one. Let's see, any more up here? There's a couple of little suckers starting. I'm gonna pull those off. And now I have a, a plant that's gonna be on its way to single stemming. I don't like the way that these are drooping down so much, touching the ground. So I may do a little pruning on those as well. And I'm thinking I might get rid of these, let's see, these flowers right here, even though I'm like, I'm getting rid of fruit. I'm gonna get rid of these because this plant is just getting started and I want it to have the best shot. Unfortunately, this is bending a little too far this way for me to force it back over to the trellis. So I'm gonna probably need to tie that up and get it training the right way. But it's as simple as that. Pruning tomatoes is really easy and if you keep on top of it, it doesn't take that long. Um, this plant's looking good. It doesn't have too many big suckers. I want to get rid of these down here by the ground though. So there we go. So that one has a little more air circulation. And as these plants grow, I am actually going to take all the leaves off the bottom about a foot up, probably. Maybe not quite a foot, but just to give nice airflow and circulation because I planted these pretty close because I planned a single stem. So that's just a quick idea of how I'm going to be pruning my tomatoes now that they are actually making a comeback. I'm super excited and I am in the sun and I forgot my sunblock. So I'm going to say goodbye in just a second. Hold on, let me flip you around so I can look at you. I also wanted to show you this plant and show you why it's really important to prune the tomatoes. Let's see if I can get you down here. Um, this is a beefsteak pink, so beefsteaks grow pretty big. But as you can see down here, the branches are all getting tangled up in each other. Now, if I leave that, that's going to leave a lot of places in here for disease, for pests. So I really need to trim this one. It's doing great, but it's getting bushy and not tall. So I'm going to pull a bunch of these off. I'm actually, there's a big giant one over here. This is a sucker, I think, that got huge. Um, let's see. Can you see this one right here? Yeah. I'm going to pull that whole thing off because this is starting to get a little crazy in here. So, again, it looks a little bit like I just pulled off half a plant. Now, I can root this. I can literally just put it in the dirt. I've put one here. I'm going to try a couple. I'm using my body here to kind of shade this so it's not quite so bright. Um, but I don't think I want another bee steak that grow huge. So I'm probably not gonna root those. But see, I still have some more down here to prune off. Let's see, this one is another sucker. And as you can see, there are a ton of suckers that have gotten really big on this one. Let's see, if, I don't know if you can see that. There we go, there we go. See this one, that's a sucker. And so that's gonna make this plant struggle to keep like making a whole nother plant. So this will actually, like I said, it's gonna create a whole nother plant. I can put this in the ground. I could also root it in water, um, but I didn't need to do that last year. Literally when it was 95 degrees, I just stuck it in the dirt in the bed next door. I actually moved the plant three times. It did fine. So I'm gonna try that again, just to see if I can repeat that since I'd never tried it before and see if I was just having some random luck. But this plant needs a big old pruning. See, here's another sucker right here that's growing up. Um, this will help this one get a little more air circulation, keep disease at bay. I'm going to get rid of this one because it's touching the ground. I don't want any of these branches that are touching the ground. They're not really branches, stems. 
um, yeah, so that's another one. And this one, see, this has two giant stems coming off it now. This is a whole nother plant that's coming up. And this is a whole plant that's coming up. So I have to decide which of these I'm going to keep. And that will be part of my single stemming process. Because right now I have two giant um, potential plants. And I think I'm going to get rid of this one here. But I'm not going to pull that one with my fingernails. It's a little too thick. And I don't want to damage this main plant right there. So I'm actually going to go get the pruners for this one. Um, that's a little thicker than I need. So yeah, I'm, it looks like, as you can see, I have just reduced that plant by about the size of half. But what that will do is help it produce more and better in the future. I may also take off some of these little flowers that are starting to develop to give this guy a little chance to reach over to the trellis and get it self-situated before it really starts putting on fruit. So there you go. That's another one that I'm going to be working with as far as single stemming goes, and I will keep you updated on how this goes. All right, I lied. I'm just going to take this one with my fingernail. That's how I do things anyway. So it's probably not the best way, but that came off. There you go, half a plant. Um, this one, if I'm going to root, I'm going to take off this leaf right here and I'll probably take off this one so there's just one single stem and if there are any flowers forming here at the top I will also get rid of those to give this the best chance of focusing on rooting not trying to fruit while it is in distress because I just pulled this off it has no roots it will definitely be in distress in this hot weather um, now I, I might put that one in the ground and see what happens just for fun um, yeah so I will keep you updated on the tomatoes and I will see you later there you go, that's as simple as that. And again, I will link those videos from Jessica and from Charles down below. There is also one, I think, from Am I Gardener? And if I find that one, I'll link it as well. But if you can see my fingers starting to turn a little green, that's one thing that tomatoes do to me. They turn me yellow and green and black. So that's one of the reasons why I like single stemming, so I'm not touching as much of the stem as I'm picking fruit. That's it. Thank you so much for joining me here on Hummingbird Hill, and I hope you'll come back so we can do some more growing and tomato pruning together. Bye! Donkeys who dust bath together stay together, apparently. You little rascals. They're so silly, and my phone's about to die. Been out here watering for about three hours. Yeah. Uh, did I mention I need to get some drips set up? Before my battery dies, there's Mount Hood. Looking beautiful. And the donkey woos being silly gooses. <sighs> what a night. No, I'm supposed to be in the garden, and I was, but... When you see a sky looking like that behind the shop, you gotta come out and take a look. It is absolutely glorious. Hold on, I'm turning this way. Look at that beautiful sky. So amazing. Ah, it's hot as heck out here, but gorgeous. Now I gotta get back to the garden. Ooh. Okay, I can't go there because the that barn's in the way. <laughs>